Welcome to a lesson on converting between spherical and rectangular equations. For review, in a spherical coordinate system, a point P in space is represented by the order triple rho comma theta comma phi, where rho is the distance between the point and the origin, this green distance here. Theta is the angle counterclockwise from the pole or positive x-axis in the xy plane, which is this blue angle here and phi is the angle between the positive z-axis and the point, which is this red angle here. When converting between the two coordinate systems, we use the equations shown here. Let's take a look at our first example. We're asked to convert the rectangular equation x equals two to spherical form. The graph of x equals two is shown here below, which is this plane in 3D. To write the equation in spherical form, we need to eliminate the variable x and only use the variables rho, theta, and phi. And we'll use this first equation to perform a substitution for x, where x equals rho sine phi cosine theta. Performing the substitution for x gives us rho sine phi cosine theta equals two. And now we do have a spherical equation because the equation only contains rho, phi, and theta let's go ahead and solve the equation for rho by dividing both sides by sine phi cosine theta. Simplifying, on the left, the quotient simplifies to one, giving us rho equals two divided by the product of sine phi and cosine theta. So we can go ahead and leave the equation in this form here, but we could also use our trig identities since one over sine phi is equal to cosecant phi, and one over cosine theta is equal to secant theta, we could also write the spherical equation as rho equals two cosecant phi secant theta. Either of these last two equations would be correct. Next, we're asked to write the equation x squared plus y squared minus c squared equals zero in spherical form. The graph is the double cone shown here below. We could perform substitutions for x, y, and z using these three equations here, which I do show in an example video. However, also notice that rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So let's work on getting x squared plus y squared plus z squared on the left side of this equation. Let's first undo the negative z squared by adding z squared to both sides and then we'll add another z squared to both sides, so the left side becomes x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So we'll have x squared plus y squared, and then we'll add an extra z squared. And then on the right side, we're first going to add z squared to undo the negative z squared on the left, which gives us z squared and then we'll add another z squared to the right side because we added this z squared here. So again, we first move the negative z squared to the right side, which gives us this z squared, and then we added another z squared to both sides in red. And now the left side, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared, which gives us rho squared is equal to two z squared. And since z is equal to rho cosine phi, c squared is equal to rho squared cosine squared phi, which gives us rho squared equals two rho squared cosine squared phi. And now let's divide both sides by rho squared. Simplifying, the left side simplifies to one. We have one equals two. This quotient simplifies to one. The right side is two cosine squared phi. And now let's go ahead and solve for cosine squared phi by dividing both sides by two. Simplifying, let's change the order of the equation and write this as cosine squared phi equals one half. So it's probably best to stop here and give the equation in spherical form as cosine squared phi equals one half. However, we could also try to solve the equation for phi to do this, the next step would be to take the square root of both sides of the equation. So let's also show this. If we square root both sides of the equation, we have the square root 
of cosine squared phi equals plus or minus the square root of one half, which simplifies to plus or minus one divided by square root two. So simplifying we have the square root of cosine squared phi is cosine phi, but this is equal to plus or minus one divided by square root two, or if we rationalize the denominator, we would have plus or minus square root two over two. The Problem with this though is we'll have to find two angles for phi that satisfy the equation, one that has a cosine function value of positive square root two divided by two, and another angle that has a cosine function value of negative square root two divided by two. So if we take a look at the unit circle, notice cosine pi over four is equal to square root two divided by two. Remember on the unit circle, x is equal to the cosine function value. And since cosine three pi over four is equal to negative square root two divided by two, in order to have an equivalent equation to the original equation, solve for phi, we have to have two equations, phi equals pi over four radians and phi equals three pi divided by four radians. So it's probably best to leave the equation as we have it in this form here. If we take a look at this graphically, notice the graph of phi equals pi over four radians gives us the top of the cone. It takes the second equation of phi equals three pi divided by four radians to get the full cone or the top and the bottom of the cone. And now let's take a look at two examples of converting from spherical form to rectangular form. Let's first convert the equation theta equals pi over four to rectangular form. The graph of this is the plane shown here below. Notice tangent theta is equal to y divided by x. So starting with that equation, since we know theta is equal to pi over four, we can substitute pi over four for theta which gives us tangent pi over four is equal to y divided by x, and tangent of pi over four is equal to one, giving us one equals y divided by x. To solve the equation for y or to clear the fraction, we multiply both sides by x, which gives us x equals, simplifying here on the right we have y, x equals y or y equals x, would be the rectangular equation for the given spherical equation. Let's look at one more example. We're asked to convert the spherical equation rho equals two cosine phi to rectangular form. The graph is the sphere shown here below. To write the equation in rectangular form, we need to eliminate rho and phi and only have the variables x, y, and z. Looking at this last equation here, if we solve for cosine phi, we would divide both sides by rho, giving us cosine phi is equal to z divided by rho. Let's replace cosine phi with z divided by rho. This gives us rho equals two times z divided by rho. And now to clear rho from the denominator, we would multiply both sides of the equation by rho. which gives us rho squared equals rho divided by rho simplifies to one here. The right side simplifies to two z. And now we can eliminate the rho squared by using this equation here. Rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus c squared. And on the right side we have two z. The equation is now in rectangular form because it only contains the variables x, y, and z. But because we know it's a sphere, let's write the equation in standard form. Let's move the two z to the left side, which gives us x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and then minus two z equals zero. But let's complete the square on the z part of the equation so that the equation is in standard form. This will allow us to find the center as well as the radius. In order to complete the square on z squared minus two z, we need to add the square of one half of negative two. The square of one half of negative two is the square of negative one or one. So we add one to both sides of the equation to complete the square on the z part. This gives us x squared plus y squared. And now to factor z squared minus two z plus one, we need to find the factors of positive one that add the negative two, which are negative one and negative one. 
which gives us two factors of z minus one, or the quantity z minus one squared. And this is equal to one. So this is a rectangular equation for the sphere, but here the equation is also in standard form, which tells us that the center is zero comma zero comma one, and the radius of the sphere is one. I hope you found this helpful.